Hello and a warm welcome to the Racing Postcast, brought to you by Racing Post Members Club on an action-packed weekend. Well, we hope it'll be action-packed with Newbury and Newcastle hopefully going ahead, along with some top-quality action in Fairy House. We've got the return of Constitution Hill. Really looking forward to hopefully seeing him in the fighting fifth. We've got a competitive Coral Gold Cup. Shishkin, will he or will he not refuse for the rehearsal chase at Newcastle? And like I say, three top-quality Grade ones at Fairy House to get stuck into alongside a really strong panel this week. Starting off with David Jennings over in Ireland. DJ, how are you, sir? I'm very good, Sam. I'm looking forward to what is hopefully going to be a very informative and exciting weekend. Uh, it's I suppose these last four weekends have been really, really good because you've got quality action in Ireland and England, and hopefully all the meetings uh, don't uh, don't fall foul of the weather. But uh, it's going to be touch and go, I'd imagine. I really hope so. I was just speaking to a friend up in Newcastle saying it was snowing there this morning. So it's not looking good too uh, as of the moment, but we'll wait and see. And Johnny Pearson, looking forward to a cracking weekend, I'm sure. Yeah, it should be it should be very exciting provided, provided it all gets go ahead. And I'm supposed to be heading to Newbury on Saturday, so hopefully I'll, I'll still be there and not, and not sheltered in a, in a duvet somewhere instead. Trying to find the winner of that Coral Gold Cup. We'll be getting on to that shortly. As always, do like the uh, video. If you are enjoying these postcasts since we've gone to a video show, do give the video a like. Get your comments in down below with your best bets of the weekend and share as always. Let's get stuck into the action then, gents. We've got four races to look at from Newbury in the first part. And we kick off with the 140 there, which is a handicap hurdle over just over two and a half miles, where Jet Powered and Uncle Bert top the market at five to one. Get a Tonics eleven to two. Cobbler's Dream is nine to one. Irish Hill and North Lodge also nine to one. Twelve to one about off to a flyer and fourteen to one and bigger about the rest. DJ, I'll start with you. Jet Powered. I remember this time last year we were all getting really excited about this Nicky Henderson horse. Disappointed then just before the new year. What do we make of this one? Sure, like it's a complete guessing game with Jeff Howard. Like you, you can. There's people who will argue that he could be absolutely chucked in here off 131. But like, all right, he won his point fairly impressively. Um, a Champagne Glory, the horsey beast, didn't turn out to be anything out of the ordinary. The when he won his maiden hurdle at Newbury, the second horse has been hugely disappointing. Etac Blue for the skeletons, really, really disappointing. And then the the hurdle race that he was sent off two to seven, the novice hurdle. Uh, and Newbury has turned out to be pretty poor as well. I know Aniston was third, but Klitschko was second, and Jupiter de Geet, the headbanger, won the race from the front. So it's hard to know what to make of Jeff Howard. I just think with a horse like Jeff Howard, you just have to kind of forget he's in the race, and if he wins, just go, right, fair enough, he won, and that's what he did, because you just have no idea how good he is. Um, the one that I liked for this, in kind of thinking without Jeff Howard, basically, rather than betting without Jeff Howard, thinking without Jeff Howard, uh, Gadatonic was the one I liked. I think he's well handicapped off, uh, off 130. Now, he, too, has been disappointing, but you go back to the run in that old fixed brush hurdle at, at Haydock from last year, off 133, he was second to Botox has. Like, that was some race. Run for Oscar was third. Holdstone was fourth. I know he was 11 at the time, but he's a good yardstick. Uh, Complete Unknown was fifth. Good Risk at All was sixth. Uh, Wakulu won races since was seventh. My Beloved Might I was eighth. It was a really strong race. He was running off the mark of 133. He was only beaten two and a quarter lengths by Botox has. He was over three lengths clear run for Oscar in third. He's three pound lower now. He's had that run over fences. I'll be very disappointed. Now, he made two terrible mistakes against Oroko Warwick. But he's back over hurdles off mark of 130. He's had the run. It's the second run after wind operation. And for me, he ticks plenty of boxes. So I'm going to get the show up and running with Get a Tonic. Yeah, you'd certainly be looking for a run from the skeleton horses at the moment. Get a Tonic, 11-2 to two currently for the 140 there at Newbury. Johnny Pearson, who are you with in the opener? I mean, as, as DJ said, with, with Jet Powered, it's it's anyone's guess. It's sort of priced up on expectations and potential. And, and you know, five to one could be generous, who knows, but it's not one I'm going to entertain myself. I think there's a couple in here overpriced in Cobbler's Dream and Irish Hill. They obviously ran, they, weren't, they didn't finish close up at Kempton last time out, but they've both had a run. They're both likely to come on for it. And if you look at Cobbler's Dream and Irish Hill, their form last season, granted Cobbler's Hill's mostly over fences, is a lot better than those runs. And if they produce that form, they've both got cracking each way shouts. And the other one that caught my eye that I won't be having a bet on, but I'd be interested to see how he runs, is Soaring Glory. On his best form from Newbury back in February 22, 
you know, he's absolutely thrown him. But, you know, he's, he needs to really find something to reproduce that. But if he, it wouldn't be a surprise to see him, see him run a lot better than he has been. OK, there we go. A few selections, ones to look out for there in the 140. Moving on to the 215 then, which is an intermediate handicap hurdle. Registers the Jerry Fielden here. Oh, just over two miles here and under control. 11 to 8 favourite last time. We saw this horse was at Sandown beating the Greatwood winner, Iberico Lord. Sent off short odds here at 11 to 8. Brentford Hope is 11 to 4. Hansard 13 to 2. Bad is 14 to 1. Punta del Este 14 to 1. Our champ 16. Uh, Keltigark is 25 to 1. Doyen to win 28. And Topley is the outsider at 100 to 1. You to go first here, Johnny Pearson. 11 to 8. Is this a good price? I don't think it's a good price. He's got. He's got bags of potential especially based on what we're seeing with Iberico Lord in the, in the Greatwood but having I mean uh, Henderson's horse has been running fairly well on the whole obviously there's been a few disappointments as we saw with um, one on Monday at Kempton I can't remember the name of it but the chase in the two runner race being beaten ball by Paul Barley first, Joe street, yeah. first, first street, street yeah. that's it yeah. and obviously Shishkin decided not to run but <laughs> you can't really say it was out of form at that point um, but uh, yeah, I mean, you look at Iberica Lord and say, oh, potentially he's throwing him, but it's not. He's had a wind up, so he thinks that maybe there's been an issue there, although that's not uncommon for Nicky Henderson. But I'd be trying to get value elsewhere. And has not, you know, he's not beaten far by Rubert on reappearance. And, you know, behind in the pocket, Aintree has obviously come out and run well, albeit in a slowly run chase race. And I think 13 to 2 massively overvalues him and I think as an each way proposition he's he's the one who I'd want to be with I completely agree I think Hansard's a great price at 13 to and the uh the exceptional Nile Houlihan taking on three pound as well there DJ with the JP potential good thing or not um I don't know Sam uh like I thought the way she traveled through the race at Sandin was really eye-catching and like it was a very old Nicky Henderson to thing to like thing to do to go straight to the mayor's novice hurdle at Cheltenham after just a one run at Newbury, and it was I think it was thirteen days between the one run at Newbury and the run at Cheltenham, so you can kind of forgive her that. The way she travels through her races suggests she is very well handicapped off one hundred and thirty seven. Look, and Birko Lord, I'd say still is potentially the one of the best handicapped horses in training. You know, like Birko Lord. Won the won the Great Wood off 126. It's gone up to 134 now. And Tom Siegel in his in his email column in the Racing Post suggested that he might even end up running Great One. So he's still well handicapped after going up eight pound. Like uh, under control could potentially still be chucked in off 137 after going up nine pound for winning that sand down. Uh, I think she probably will win. Uh, the one that does interest me at bigger prices because I t- do think he's really well handicapped is Punta del Este. But Punta del Este needs soft ground, needs it kind of bottomless, I'd imagine, to be his best. I, I thought it would be the last day. He had his conditions, but he hadn't had a run under his belt. And we all know the skeletons have been improving from, from for a run. He didn't have the run, but I just thought even he kind of blew up early in the straight and then got a second win and closed down Richmond Lake at the line to be only be beaten two lengths during the November meeting at Cheltenham. And um, he's still off 121. Interesting, they're not claiming off him this time. Tristan Doyle doesn't ride and Harry takes over. He is a very well handicapped horse when he gets bottomless ground. So if it is tacky and really hard work, I could see Punta del Este running a big race. So he's maybe an alternative, but I think under control will probably win. Okay, one to maybe look at, see how the ground's riding towards the start of the card. And Punta del Este may be overpriced if things do get a bit sticky there at Newbury. Going on to the 250, then the highlight on the card there is the Coral Gold Cup handicap chase. Call this what you want. 20 runners going to post at the time of recording over three and a quarter miles and complete unknown for the Nichols team. Tops the market 7-1. to one. Marla Mission 15-2. to Mombeg Genius is 8-1. to Stamp Town 9-1. to one. Midnight River is 10-1. to one. Stolen Silver 14-1. to 16-1 to one. about a hoist in your R power and remastered and 20 to 1 and bigger the rest uh david jennings it's a bit of a mission to try and find the winner of this one it is it is it's a very interesting race i i don't particularly think it's a really strong hennessy slash coral gold cup to be honest with you i think there's a lot of nice handicappers in here Mm. i think most of these horses that are in this race will always be running handicaps that's the way i'm looking at it um i think they're even the likes of maller mission who's a very good horse, might have won the National Hunt Chase at Chatham had he not tipped up at the second last. 
like I could see him being a Grand National type or an Irish Grand National type, similar for complete unknown. You're thinking Grand Nationals, Mambe Genius, you're thinking Grand Nationals, Stumptown, who could be really well handicapped off 143, of course he could. And if you look back to the way he travelled in the Kimmy or Cheltenham, he has to have a chance. Um, but I'm just going through them and you're kind of going, these are all like the handicappers. I'm not sure any of them are absolutely chucked in. And I have just always thought there was one track and one track only made for a high senior, and that is Newbury. <laughs> so I, I'll tell you this, right? If you were told, imagine if you were told, right, that a high senior would run to his best here, okay, and that he wouldn't make a mistake. If you were guaranteed that, that he would run to his peak form, okay, and like his peak form is seriously strong. It's 174, and a race and post training of 174 when beaten by Shishkin and Aintree. That was only in April. It's only two runs ago. We know he's always stink on his first run of the year. We know it. But it kind of was always in the lead up to this race. I've been thinking about it, and I've been thinking of High Senior. He's in there. He'll probably run. Um, but sure, a High Senior is a High Senior. And then when I started thinking about the race more seriously and started going through the whole field, I just kept coming back to that thought that a high senior is able to go with speed, that a lot of these are going to be taken out of their comfort zone. We saw in last year's Gold Cup, when he got into a rhythm in the early part of that second circuit, he was he was absolutely bombing along, pinging fences, and then obviously he does what a high senior does and crash through it. He doesn't like ditches. All his form, all his mistakes seems to come with ditches. So when the ditches come in this race, your heart will be in your mouth with a high senior. People will point to the fact that Denman only won this race off, I think it was 173, and even the first time he won it off, it was off a lower mark than a high senior runs off here. But Denman was beating what a friend. What a friend ended up spending the rest of his life in grade ones. He won a grade one, I think, at Leperstown. So there's no grade one horses in this race. We know for a fact that a high senior is a proper grade one horse. He is not chucked in here. We know that. We know he's not a 180 horse, so he can't be really well handicapped. But what he's going to do here, I think, is take a lot of horse out of their comfort zone. And if he doesn't make a mistake, like he was born for Newbury. The only time he's been here, he absolutely bolted up in a novice chase by 30-something lengths. I just think the track is made for him. I think if he's on a go in day, I think 16-1 to 1 is a massive price. And, you know, you're just hoping that it's one of these days where a high senior will just actually not make a mistake. But who knows what's going to happen. But 16-1 to 1 is too big of a price. I don't think it's a good race. And I think he's a very good horse. Just a quick one, DJ. I'll, I'll come back to you on that. I mean, Ahoy Senor, are we looking at, with what's happened with the Gold Cup field since the big race from March, are we looking at a potential Gold Cup outsider if he were to go and win this? Uh, sure. Like, uh, it's, it's Ahoy Senor's middle name should be if, you know, Ahoy if <laughs> Senor. Because, like, it's it's constantly, like, sure, look, I, I've loved the horse from day one. Like, I, I go back to, like, even going as far back to the day he was beaten by Fort Skew Wood in his, in his bumper at air. Like, even that day, there was there was potential there that kind of said, he was so keen and powerful in the race, I said, he's going to make a smashing horse. Then, do you think I backed him against Brave Man's Game in Aintree? Absolutely not. He was 6-6-1. Six, six but the day, like, there's been a couple of occasions where you just say to yourself, wow, like, the, the when he won the when he when he won the um, the mile made novice chase at Aintree, when he beat Fury Road, Long Press, and Brave Man's Game, like he was absolutely breathtaking that day. What I think the secret to a high senior basically is more than three miles and a flat track, and he's only going to get those two things once this season. That's here because I'm not sure the undulations at Cheltenham really suit him. I think Newbury is made from three mile. One furlong and 214 yards. This is his track. This is his trip. And I'm hoping this is going to be his day. But look, it's a high senior. Your guess is as good as mine what, what side of the bed he's going to come out of. So, fingers crossed. I do, I do think 16 to 1 is too big of a price in a race that that probably isn't as up to scratch as other years. But I wouldn't fancy him for the Gold Cup, Sam. Okay, it'd be great to see him run a big one. 16 to 1, currently the top weight of high senior for the Coral Gold Cup. Jonathan Pearson, match that case. I mean, it's hard to disagree. I mean, I was going through it earlier and it, to myself, I said, usually comes on for a run, could outclass all of them, but there's too many questions over his jumping every time he run. You know, when he when he won at Newbury in a novice chase, there was only three runners. But, you know, I, so I wouldn't, I don't, while the track is very comparable, the fact that he's going to have a lot more horses to take on here, if any of them sort of get in his way or put him off a bit, I think that really could could mess up his jumping a bit. But will so they be able to? Will they be able to? If he sets out in front, if he pings the first in front, will they be able to annoy him? Because they're going to spoil their chances by trying to annoy him. 
I know, but if he, if he doesn't get in front or if he gets one or two wrong from in front, you know, there's, there's every chance one or two of these are going to try and take him on from, for the lead. And that could, if he makes a mistake early, I think that could really throw him off for the rest of the race. So I can't, I can't be backing myself. For all, for all there is a chance, he could go and outclass all of them, which I'm very aware of. He's not, he's not, what I, he's not who I see as the winner of the race. The horse I see as the most likely winner is Stumptown for Gavin Cromwell, who's obviously had a flying start to the season, been winning plenty of races over, over this side of the, of the Irish Sea. And, you know, OK, he's been a little bit disappointing on his last two runs, but he comes here fresh off a bit of a break since the end of September. He was very good when winning at Sandown in February. Then, obviously, only just came up short behind Angel's Dawn, who I think was very well handicapped at Cheltenham in March. And I think this race could have been the plan for quite a while now. And I think he's very much the one they've got to beat. And I think with Danny Mullins on board as well, can only only be a positive. And Stumptown is who I see is the most likely winner here. OK, Stumptown 9-1 to one for Johnny Pearson in the Coral Gold Cup. Moving on to the final race there at Newbury, the 325, which is a race over just over two miles here, which is a handicap chase. Class 2 event where Master Chewy tops the market at 2 to 1, Real Stone 3 to 1, Elixir de Nuts is 5 to 1, Excitations 17 to 2, Bollinger and Krug 10 to 1, Colbury Tiger 20 to 1, The Russian Doyen also 20 to 1. Johnny Pearson, you're to go first here. Who'd you like? I like Real Stone here quite a lot. Obviously, mm-hmm. disappointed at Aintree, but lots of the skeletons have been disappointed in the season, so I wouldn't, wouldn't read too much into that. Then, obviously, it was seriously impressive at Haydock and potentially handicap has treated them lightly for that only going up up eight pounds for a 20 length win and although Master Chewy has obviously got decent form behind Jello last time who I think will actually and obviously beat the head of Real Stone in that race but I think Jello will actually um, win tomorrow on Friday but, but I think Real Stone will be too good here the only the only doubt for me, the only question for me is the fact that he ran a week ago at Haydock. But I think if he comes here in the same form as that, I think he he'll win the race. Okay, real stone three to one. DJ, any agreement? No, complete opposite. I thought Master Chewy was going to be extremely hard to beat here. Like I know I can see the case. Real Stone obviously was you know the guts of fifteen lengths behind Master Chewy when they when they ran at entry. Um, but uh, look. I think with Master Chewy, I think the fences, the way the the defences were omitted at at Aintree didn't play to his strengths because he was really attacking his fences and and the first day he won at Aintree, he really did enjoy himself and it looked like he was a completely different animal to what we saw over hurdles. I think the fact that the fences weren't jumped was was a hindrance rather than a help to him. I know you can say he's gone up six pound for being beaten in a race, but this Jello from the from the Venetia Williams table, he's a bit of an enigma in that I thought last season. When he won um, a handicap hurdle, he beat a horse that's proven very disappointing since called Harta de Darius, but he absolutely bolted up on his English debut. And then he proved bitterly disappointing after that. So I'd say he's a horse when he does kind of get it all together, Jello, that he's exceptionally good. And I'd say he, he was just on a go one day the last day of entry. Um, I think Master Two is a better horse than Real Stone. He's only given him six pound. I'd say they're thinking he'll end up a great at chase as Master Chewy. So I think he's one of the best bets of the day. Okay, Master Chewy, 2-1 to one on the best day, bets of the day there at Newbury for DJ. And that's Newbury all done and dusted. We'll be back shortly after this, hopefully covering the racing from Newcastle. But first, here's a Members Club preview. Welcome back to the second part of the Racing Postcast, brought to you by Racing Post Members Club, Sam Hart, David Jennings and Jonathan Pearson, taking you through the weekend action. We've only got two races to look at from Newcastle, which may not be the worst thing in the world, considering it may not go ahead. But the 155 there is where we start, and it's the fighting fifth hurdle, a grade one here over two miles, where the return of the champion, the champion hurdle winner, Constitution Hill, 5-1 to one on he is for Nicky Henderson's team. Love him while seven to one. You were at well fourteen to one. Not so sleepy twenty to one. And Benson is one hundred and twenty-five to one. DJ Constitution Hill. What is there to say about this horse? We don't need to preview it for long, but he's just so excited, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, he is. Uh, he is. 
like you still kind of get excited even though he's one to five there's people that will be on twitter and they'll say oh this is so boring and it is boring but it's you, you can have something that is boring and also exciting i think and i think any day you see constitution hill is exciting and boring but it's brilliantly boring do you know that kind of way uh i just think he's so exuberant he's not like your typical horse to watch because he's so enthusiastic and he lets fly at hurdles and you know there's little margin for error um He's just he's just far better than these, and he's going to win comfortably. I'd imagine it'll probably be exactly twin. Like if you're going for a one, two, three, four, five, like I'd say Constitution Hill will win, Love Envoy will be second, You Are Well will be third, Not So Sleepy will be fourth, and Benson <laughs> will be fifth. And it's very hard to see how they won't finish in that order. Really, I know people that say that Not So Sleepy has had, or sorry, You Are Well has had a run and has beaten Lucia, but Love Envoy I think is just a more talented mare than You Are Well. So I think it's going to be very straightforward. Look, we're only going to really get a proper crack at Constitution Hill um, next March when either Imperial Pass who runs Sunday and uh, Statement takes him on and I just think one very interesting thing I spoke to Paul Townend after he won the Morgiana last Saturday on Statement and look he, he obviously was delighted that the horse won the race but he's adam- he's the only one that really knows how Statement ran in Cheltenham last March and he's adamant that at no stage of the race did Statement give him the feel that he had earlier on in the season I said how did he feel on Saturday compared to March like chalk and cheese, like he took him everywhere in the race on, on Saturday. He didn't take him everywhere at, Ch- in, at Chatham. I mean, he's never going to beat Constitution Hill, but it's just interesting. He's nine lengths to find. They obviously feel maybe he's five, six lengths better than he showed at Cheltenham. So um, it's going to be interesting come March, but Constitution Hill is probably the best hurdler I've seen. So uh, you'd be pretty disappointed if he doesn't win another champion hurdles, huh? Yeah, well, look, we've got the Hatton's Grace coming up this weekend as well. And I did ask Keith Melrose the question last week, who finishes closer to Constitution Hill, State Man or Imperio Pass? DJ, I'll get your opinion from an Irish angle here. But who would you say will be finishing second to Constitution Hill in March? Uh, probably State Man, um, just because you know what you're going to get from him and he's so professional. I think Imperio Pass is probably more to prove. And uh, even though, obviously, the... The Ballymore form has worked out spectacularly already with Gaelic Warrior. Um, yeah, I think Statement at, at this moment in time has gone and done it. But if Imperial Pass pulls up on Sunday, obviously it's Imperial Pass because he's an unknown. But if you were to offer me a you know a free bet now on who I thought would finish second, it would be probably Statement. Okay, yeah. Johnny Pearson, DJ said they'll finish in the order of the bet in Jewelry. Uh Near enough. I mean, you could, it's one of those Constitution Hills rated. Twenty-two pounds better than anything else in the race, so if, to see him not win on the bridle will be a little bit of a surprise. And not so sleepy. What's he going to do? Is he going to try and ping out from the front? I wouldn't. I wouldn't have thought that's the wisest idea. But um, yeah, you can you can make cases for betting without with what you wear well on Love Envoy, but that's not something that's mm-hmm. going to interest me in this race. I'm just going to enjoy watching. Hopefully, seeing Constitution Hill win. Going back to to what DJ was saying about State Man and Paul Townend's comments. The only question I would have over, you know, him not having the same feel at Cheltenham, just arguably the quickest he's been on State Man going up against Constitution Hill. You know, they didn't exactly go that fast at Punchestown last week, and they hadn't been going too fast in most of the hurdles in Ireland that he's running. So I wouldn't, you know, maybe he's just properly taken out his comfort zone at Cheltenham. That is that is one another maybe. angle to look at for that. I'm, I'm not saying I'm right on that, but it is. it would be a, it could just be that much below what Constitution Hill is. So that's the only thing I would say on that. Yeah, fair point. Well made. We're, we're looking at a bit of a monster in Constitution Hill. Like I say, you don't have to have a bet on every race this week and you sit back and enjoy a spectacular performance from this horse. Hopefully in the 155 there at Newcastle, the fighting fifth hurdle. One more race we're going to look at from Newcastle is the 305, which is the rehearsal handicap chase. Just shy of three miles here. And Shishkin, here we go again. Second second take here for Shishkin, 13 to 8 favourite. Empire Steel is 11 to 2. Elvis Mayo is 13 to 2. Gar Law is 8 to 1. Bill Baxter, 10 to 1. That's all right, Gino is 11 to 1. A wave of the C14s. And Sildenej is 28 to 1. Johnny Pearson, look, we don't. What happened last week? We don't need to discuss that, but will it happen again is the question. I mean, I don't know. I remember we were on. Was it the other week? And that um, Paul Burnhorse coming over from Ireland for the Greatwood that had run out yes. the time before. And I said, you know, I don't know why his favourite or whatever else. And he went and ran out of the first. So there's every chance he might go and refuse to run again. Mm. But if he turns up, it's hard, it's hard to look past him and what he's done. For all, for all it's a handicap and 
and not a, a graded race, he he's probably too classy for the rest of them if he does if he does this, if he is on a going day. But uh, it's a race I'm going to sit out. Mm. But it's it's I mean once again I can make you can make cases for those in behind Garlo in particular in some of his previous form, but he hasn't really shown it since. January, so it's not. I mean, I know he's end one run, and was dis, but it was disappointing, and it's not something I'd want. Not pre- proposition I'd want to be betting on. Absolutely, look, he's thirteen to eight favourite, and DJ Nicky needs to get a run into him before the King George. This was seemed like his only option, really, with enough time for him to have prep for the King George. Thirteen to eight, is it a price that you just leave alone and, and probably let him win? I think he'll start. I think he'll win. I think thirteen to eight is a decent price, and I think he'll win the King George. So there you go. Ooh. There's your there's your four in a row. Oh, um, yeah, look, horses are they're not humans. Like you know, we just don't know what they're thinking, um, and God only knows what he was thinking. He is like there are be, there have been occasions. The one thing I could never understand with Chiskin, and it baffled me in his early part of his career. They always said that he was you know ferociously fast at home, you know, and, and like, that he did great work, but he never looked that way in his races. And I suppose it's a similar story with Altior. Altior sometimes. Mm. They said they couldn't get out to work with him at home, and yet when he came to the races, he looked a little bit lethargic. With Shishkin, you know, you've seen that turn of foot in the Supreme when he beat Abacadabras when he got hampered. Like, it was an incredible turn of foot to win that race. He seems to be getting a little bit slower as he's getting older, but um, he's just so unexposed over three miles. Like, the only time he's done it, he looked beaten, and he got up to beat a high senior. He posted a racing post rating of 175. Like, he still beat a high senior who was on a going day, and we all know he's a pretty good horse. Everything went wrong in the in the Ryanair, and he got outpaced. He still stayed on to finish second to an, an in-form envoy LN. He hammered Pictori prior to that. Um, probably, if you, if you take out the, the, the two runs, the run in the champion chase where he was pulled up after, you know, a few fences, and then the, the Tingle Creek kind of bomb out last season, you know, he's, he's a, an exceptional racehorse who's running against unexceptional racehorses here will he start i have no i have no um i have no idea whether he's going to start or not i just have a feeling he will do you know kind of way the cheek pieces are off the cheek pieces are off and i'm sure they would have done a little bit of work to get his enthusiasm back during the week he'll be freshened up over the last couple of days they'll try and make him as happy as possible going to the races they'll try and make the experience as happy as possible with him i don't know what the rules and regulations are with having people down to the start but I always think with problems like this, when you're really aware of it, it tends to be you can do little tweaks to try and to try and sort it out. Now, I don't think they were fully aware of it going into Ascot last week. Now they're fully aware of it. I expect little tweaks to be made. I expect them to start. I expect them to win. I think 13 days is a good price, and I expect them to win the King George. There we go. Big statement. He could be the King George winner, according to David Jennings. Look, two Nicky Henson stars back out this weekend. Really looking forward to hopefully, fingers crossed, seeing them at Newcastle on Saturday. That's all the action in the UK covered. We're going to be covering three grade ones from Ireland shortly after this. You spoke. We listened. Introducing race cards redefined. Three brand new and unique race cards tailored for your needs. Our new and improved standard race card is the punter's favourite and is everything you need to make your selection. Get the maximum amount of information in the palm of your hand with Expert View. Cover all areas and get all the same information as our newspaper. With Compact View, you can make a quick decision on who to back. View more runners and more odds on one race. Which race card will you choose? Welcome back to the final part of the Racing Postcast brought to you by Racing Post Members Club. Sam Hart, DJ and Johnny Pearson all in the seat previewing the weekend action. Fairy House is our point of call now for three grade ones there on Sunday. Really excited for these and we kick off with the 125 which is the Royal Bond Novice Hurdle. Two miles here, and Encanto Bruno tops the market at 5-2. On to bar is 11-4. Slate Steel is 4-1. Farron Glory, 6-1. Fasol Mode, 7-1. What's up, darling? 7s. King of Kingsfield, 12-1. Bialystock is 14-1. And Horant Suderi 
if I've got that right, I don't know. I might get corrected by DJ's 20 to 1. Go on, DJ. Raw Bond Novice Hurdle. It's got a tradition of being a very strong Novice Hurdle moving towards the big festivals. Is it going to be just as strong this year? No. No, I don't think so. Uh, it's it's. See, I, the, the problem is, and obviously we're, we're filming this on Thursday, we don't know what's going to run yet. And that's that's obviously a little bit of a killer in this sense. Like you go back through it and you think Marine National won it, Envoy LN won it. Um, you know, proper good horse that won this yeah. over the years. Uh, I think Encanto Bruno was a good horse, but I don't think he's a great one winner. Um, there's just I think he, he he looked really good last time. I thought it was an exceptional ride from Keith Donahue. But has he more abil- ability than Antober? I don't think he does. Um, Antober would be wanting the ground to be pretty soft for him to run. I'd imagine. Um, I think it's actually pronounced on Tubber, would you believe? Um, so I, I, I think I, I think he's I think he's a very very good horse on Tubber, and if he was to run, I think he's potentially the the best of them. Do you know what I mean? I think he is. Um, it means the well. So on Tubber is a well in 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 Irish. Uh, uh-huh. I think he, I think he's a better horse than Slade Steel, even though Slade Steel was very good at Nays. I think Farron Glory is probably a little bit underestimated. The one horse, if he is declared, that will run better than his price at the moment is King of Kingsfield because when he ran, when he I liked him as a bumper horse. He's the best work horse they have in Gordon's. They can't get anything to work with him. He's a morning glory, but someday he's just going to pop up and potentially in a flat race and win a big one. Um, he just doesn't bring his homework to the track. But you just wonder maybe will a better race suit him? And I think with King of Kingsfield, first time out, Gordon said he was two to five. I remember I was doing the parade in a fairy house that day, and he basically said he wouldn't win. It was extraordinary. He goes, "Look, my horse, he badly needs it, and and you know he might win this race." And at that stage, he was two to seven. He drifted two to five, and he was beaten by Red. So last time at Nace, they tried to use their fitness to the best of their ability. So they popped him out in front, went too quick, and he got tired and was beaten by Slade Steel. I think if they actually sit in this time and take a lead, I think he'll produce a better performance. Um, I think he's the one that potentially could be overpriced at 12-1. to 1. I think Encanto Bruno is favourite at the moment because we know he's going to run and Gavin Cromwell has said he's going to run. Only one of Henry's, I'd imagine, will run on Tubber or Slade Steel. On Tubber, the long term is by far the most exciting of these, I think. So uh, he'd be the one I'd be most interested in. But as I said, at the price at the moment, 12 to 1 King of Kingsfield is probably a little bit of value. Yeah, as DJ says, at the time of the recording, we don't actually have the full decks. We just wanted to give a, a little preview ahead of Sunday's action on Tubba. I had to add a French accent to it because that's what I tend to do with a lot of horses. But on Tubba, it's actually Irish for well. There we go. Thank you, DJ, for that one. Um, it's 11 to 4 currently, but look out for King of Kingsfield currently 12 to 1. Johnny Pearson, any opinions on the Royal Bond? I think as as with most of these, it's on potential and then, and what's going to run. You know, you've got two to Bromhead in the same silks. A chance I either Slade Still or Antobar, one of them, there's a good chance won't run in the race. So that obviously doesn't help matters. And Antobar obviously looks like he could could be anything, but until he actually goes and beats better horses, we're not going to know that. The one that I think could be overpriced if he does run is Bialystok. Uh, his run at Galway in August... Okay, it was 7th of 19th. But it was only five and three quarter lengths behind Zarak the Brave, who was obviously one-time favourite for the Triumph Hurdle before before suffering a slight bet- setback. And I think that's, along with, I mean, Tax for Max disappointed the other day, I think it was, but um, along with the run prior to that at, uh, in April, which is down, I think he could, I think 14 to 1 is a, a huge price for him. And, and what a lot of them have still got to prove that they've run up to that level. Um, so if it stays how it is, he would be an each way bet for me. Okay, Bialy stopped fourteen to one currently for the Royal Bond, the one twenty five there on Sunday. The two o'clock is the Drinmore Novice Chase over two and a half miles. Let's be clear about it. Currently tops the market at fifteen to eight. Found a fifty nine to four Charger, three to one. I am Maximus thirteen to two. American Mike is ten to one. Favri de Chambou is fourteen to one, and Percival Legawa is fourteen to one. Also. Johnny Pearson, who do you like in this novice? Surely not Charger at ten. Um, I mean, again, it's hard. It's hard to know. If, you know, it's um, it's a novice chase. You know, most of them haven't had a huge amount of experience over fences. I don't think Favre do uh, Champ do run after winning last weekend in what was a strange race with a flooring ball to jump in left the whole way around and loose horse causing a bit of carnage up front. American Mike, obviously very impressive, but I don't think that's the strongest form on offer. 
Sharjah, once again, very impressive, but not the strongest form beating, obviously beating handicappers. Uh, let's be clear about it. Couldn't have been more impressive than his two show starts. And it's, it's going to be a, a very short price as a result. But I am Maximus, potentially very interesting, at 13 to 2. You know, ran ran at this meeting last year in a beginner's chase over the same trip and was a good, good second before then uh, left down over the same trip being second to Gentleman's Game. And obviously, we saw win the Charlie Hall, wasn't it? Yeah. And then, obviously, didn't run badly behind the real whacker at Cheltenham in March. And obviously, won, granted, over a much longer trip in a uh, fairy house in April. But I think, you know, he's got form. There's nothing to say he can't reproduce similar levels to that over this trip and at 13 to 2 looks far too big a price and he's he's the most interesting horse in the race for me okay i am maximus 13 to 2 currently in the jp colors for yourself here dj what have you looked at so far i don't know sam i thought it was really tricky i thought these two races were really tricky um uh, I, I'll go through them very quickly. I think let's be clear about it has already proven himself to be a better chaser than he is a herder. He's, he's bolted up in both his starts and the form has worked out reasonably well. Um, you know, Largy debut was 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 uh, second at the Munster National and he beat him at Goran. Uh, found a 50, I thought, was a kind of a, an outsider arc or arcal type for this season because I thought he was always going to make a better chaser than a hurdler. So he'd be the one I'd side with at the top of the market. Charger... I think Sharjah is overlooked because he's 10, but like, sure, that didn't stop Faheen. And, you know, Sharjah is a very good horse on his day who was beaten three lengths by Constitution Hill and he hasn't put a foot wrong over fences. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't be slagging off Sharjah as much as some people are. Oh, yeah, Maximus, you could definitely make a case for him being too big of a price 13 to 2. I'd be shocked if American Mike ran. I'd be shocked if Favori de Champ ran, given he was brilliant last Saturday at, at uh, Punchestown. And then you're into Persa Galagalwa, who really does interest me because he's a proper horse. Now, he's probably won potentially for, you know, a Kim Muir or something, or maybe they'll go down the handicap route with Percy Galagalwa. But I do think he's a good horse. I do think he will prove himself to be a good horse. I don't think he was done with. He wouldn't have beaten, let's be clear about it, a cork. But I thought he's... I, I still thought he travelled into the race quite nicely. Um, I would just about, at this stage, be a found of 50 man. But until we get the final fields, I just wouldn't be going through it with a fine two comb. I think it's a good race. Don't think it's a brilliant race. Okay, absolutely fine. That's the two o'clock there at Fairy House. And the 2.35, this is the big one on the day, is the Bar 1 Racing Hat and Grace Hurdle. Two and a half miles here. It's a grade one contest. We're in Pere Pass. We get to see this horse out as well. Four to six favourite. Tiopu is 11 to four. Irish point eight to one. Astro Diamond 11 to one. Buddy one is 14 to one. Zana here, 14 to one. And Beacon Edge, 33 to 1. I asked you the question earlier, DJ, who would finish close to Constitution Hill? And you said State Man, but will Imperi Pass win this one? I think he will, yeah. I think he will. Um, I just said State Man because at this stage he's more professional yeah, and he yeah, just yeah. wins races and does what he does. Imperi Pass, there's still a lot of unknowns with Imperi Pass. Um, I, 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 with Imperi Pass, I love the fact that he finds plenty off the bridle. Like, even at Cheltenham, when push came to shove, he really quickened. When they dropped him back to two miles at, at, at punch down for the grade two, the Moscow Flyer, he really quickened as well. He found plenty for pressure. He's a really good attitude. He's got loads of class. And I kind of like the fact that he doesn't, like they've always said, he doesn't work as well as statement at home. And, you know, he, he does all his best work on the track. So... I would say they still haven't got the bottom to the bottom of Imperial Pass yet. He looks like he's going to be fine over this trip. You know, it's two mile four and 70 yards. The Ballymore was just showing you two mile five. So I think he'd be fine over the trip. I think if it's absolutely bottomless, that gives Tihupu every chance because Tihupu just, the softer it is, the better Tihupu. Dream in this race last year was soft ground. When he won the Galmai at Goran, it was almost unraceable. The, he wants a bog to be his best, even though he does handle better ground. He's probably my idea of the Sayers hurdle winner this season. Um, I just think Imperial Pass could be potentially top notch. I'd imagine Tihupu will, will run rather than Irish Point. Um, and Asher Diamond, I think, is interesting. I could see her running well. I think she's going to have a good season. They're keeping her over hurdles. She was really, really good at Fairy House in the Grade One. It might have been the greatest Grade One ever run at Fairy House, but I thought she was really impressive after missing Cheltenham with a setback. So um, I think if Perry Pass will will probably beat Tiupu. I think Astro Diamond will produce a big performance, but a big performance from her is probably only finishing third. But I do think Perry Pass will probably win. Yeah, Perry Pass. 
six to four on favour at the moment. Exciting to see two champion hurdle contenders out this weekend. Johnny Pearson share the same opinion. The fact that Imperi Pass probably will win this. I share the same opinion that it's between T U P and uh, Imperi Pass, but I wouldn't be backing Imperi Pass at the at the price. Mm. He's still got for me. He's still got a little bit more to prove, whereas T U P is actually okay. Granted, he's won a few grade ones or a couple of grade ones, but you know, T U P won the race last year. Obviously, goes well off a break coming into this, doing you know taking the same route as last year. Thought. So, he was a little unlucky in the in the state title last year, all things said and done, um, at Cheltenham. And I think at the prices, I'd rather be with him than in Perro Pass. Okay, However, I'm probably not going to have a bet, but I think because mm. yeah, but I think TUP is probably the more likely to do for me in this race at this time of year okay. over this okay. trip. A race to leave alone for Johnny Pearson on Sunday. But exciting to see some really top quality horses. What do you fancy in it, Sam? What in the heart? It's boring, but I think Imperi give Pass. Us the winner, and... Give us the winner of the three great ones. Imperi Pass, what would yeah. the more? Uh, I think Imperi Pass will win the um, Hatton's Grace. I think that I don't want to be boring, but I'm going to probably be boring. I do think, let's be clear about it, we'll probably just win the, the Drinmore. And in terms right, of the winner of the Royal Bond, I think Antobo will win it if running. I think I agree with you there. I think that's when we say this this is a top quality race usually, it may not be as top quality, but if there is a potential star in the field, it's this horse here. There's no doubt about it. So eleven to four, if the horse runs, I don't think the horse will be eleven to four if running, but I do think that's the way it will go. So that's my free grade ones on Sunday. Like I said, like I haven't had a strong look at it either. Like we haven't got the full decks as of yet. But my nap is still to come. Um and you won't be able to predict that this week, I'm sure, DJ. So We'll wait and see what that is. But we've got to find out if there's any other racing or any other selections that the gents want to put up before we get into the naps. And Johnny Pearson, are you sticking with the main races or is there anything else that we should look at away from? Uh, uh, I mean, there's lots of good racing over in uh, over in Ireland, but it's a lot of horses that sort of either juveniles or novices that we're going to find out a lot more following their run. So it's not no horse I'll be getting stuck into, but lots I'll be watching with a close eye. And then for a lot of it, seeing seeing what the weather does and what who actually runs, and then you know making further, may potentially making more distance from there. But currently, this is what we've gone through is where I'm at. Okay, here we go. And DJ, you always have something else for me away from the action that we've covered. What else is there to look forward to in Ireland? Well, well we just give a shout out to the, the by far the best beginners chase of the season so far. Yeah. We've got Corbett's Cross. V Monty Star, mm. V Nick Rocket, V Three Car Bragg in the 11:45 at uh, Ferry House on Saturday. So that's going to be an absolute corker. And then moving on to the 12:50, we have got the return to action of the one and only Bally Byrne, who has a re- if hopefully they both run uh, because he um, these are the final decks because he faces Firefox, who uh, could mm. potentially be a star. So it's interesting. The thing is, though, I think Firefox definitely wants further than two miles so it's interesting they're starting off over two miles whereas Ballyburn I think will be fine over two miles that's going to be really exciting I, I've always been a fan of Ballyburn so hopefully he does the business um, as regards potential um, potential wagers on the card uh, it's interesting that uh, Gavin Cromwell has decided to sidestep the hat or the Royal Bond with Redstone and he goes to the rated novice hurdle instead at 125 so I thought that was potentially a tip in itself in the two o'clock which is the list of handicap chase at fairy house uh real interesting race at uh, whiskey wealth it's reasonably interesting here i thought for terence o'brien because whiskey wealth is the horse who i thought would have beaten dino blue had whiskey wealth not come down at the last at the in the novice handicap chase at the irish band national meeting back in in uh, in april now that was off mark of 124 he's only two pound higher now he's had a little pipe opener from the front at cork last time i th- plan for whiskey wells michael connor takes off three pound i thought he was really interesting in the two o'clock at fairy house so good card at fairy house on saturday as well as sunday yeah looking forward to the action over there uh from fairy house this weekend now it's time for the naps of the weekend um johnny pearson i'll start with you who's the best bet this weekend uh for me it's uh, stump town in the coral gold cup also the easiest race to predict the winner of, uh, of all the weekend's action <laughs> I think I think this has been the plan for for a bit of time, and I think he'll be spot on for it. And I think, provided Hoyson does make a couple of mistakes and doesn't outclass everyone, I think he'll he'll go and win the race. 
Not against, not against the 9-1 to nap here on the postcast. And the 250 at Newbury, the Coral Gold Cup, stumped down for Johnny Pearce. And I'm going to go next. I'm going to put up Hansard in the 215 at Newbury, the intermediate handicap hurdle. I think this horse, I mean, Johnny's made a great case already, but go back and look at that run at Aintree in the top novice hurdle, grade one there, finishing fourth behind the likes of In The Pocket, strong leader who ran last week, but finished ahead of some good horses in Tamuras, found a 50 um, out of belly. There were some good horses in that race. Now, this horse has dropped down to a mark of 138, and as I said earlier, the excellent Nile Houlihan, takes off three pounds. Has already had a run this season, which I think Gary Moore's horses often need in the elite hurdle at Wincanton. That was a grade two. I think 13 to two is far too big against the six to four favourite in under control. That's in the 2.15 at Newbury. And David Jennings, is the uh, nap from Ireland or from the UK? No, it's from the, the UK, uh, a horse that I absolutely love. Uh, it's in the 105 at Newbury on uh, Saturday. Look, I'm playing a lot safer than you. I want to get a winner, a winning nap, and I think this is a winner. Uh, Masaccio runs yes. in the 105. The horse who beat, beat the bat at Chepstow. I thought he did a lot wrong at uh, Chepstow and got in a bit deep to the last and still had enough kind of pace and class to beat, beat the bat. Uh, I Look, I loved him last season as a, as a bumper horse. I thought on a couple of occasions, I thought he shaped like the best horse in the race and he didn't end up winning races. Like when he ran in the bumper at Newbury where he's beaten by As Luck Goes, I thought it was a, a moderate ride, and then he he went to 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 Aintree for the for the Grade Two bumper behind Flower of the Dreams, and like it's it's very hard to to try and win those races from so far back. And I thought he shaped with loads of promise. He was only beaten five and a half lengths. He met trouble in running. It was a lovely hurdling debut. He like. I'd imagine he's going to be a short price favourite, but Jinko Blue might just make the market because he had a tall reputation going to Warwick. I know he was beaten that day, but he might just make the market a little bit for Mazzaccio. And, and Emily Andy um, is in there as well, under a penalty as well as Mazzaccio for Paul Nichols. So I'm hoping we're talking about the right side of evens for Mazzaccio, but uh, this is a this is a good... Everything I've seen from this horse tells me he's a really good horse. So Mazzaccio in the 105 at Newbury on Saturday is my name. He's my only current anti-post bet for Cheltenham. DJ and I've got him for the Albert Bartlett currently, Masaccio. So I'm oh. excited to see what price fifties uh, currently. Lovely. Yeah, I got that. Early. That was the only bet I've had so far, which is a Albert Bartlett, not the easiest race to to find a winner of mm-hmm. early early days. But I've I've taken a risk there. I thought fifty to one was too big as soon as beat the bat one the other weekend. Um, that's it for this week's postcast. Just find out what the gents are up to this weekend. DJ, you've got to be at Fairy House for the two days, haven't you? Yes, I have a, a busy weekend ahead, working both days. But it's one of my favorite. That Sunday meeting at Fairy House with the Trey Guide once. One of my favorite meetings of the year. Really good racing. It's kind of a few weeks before Christmas. Everybody's in good form, and uh, yeah, looking forward to it. And we have our Irish Christmas party on Sunday night as well. So that should be interesting. The one and only Johnny Deneen is gracing us with his presence. So uh, uh, that should be a bit of a laugh. So looking forward to that. So that's Sunday night after uh, Fairy House on Sunday. So yeah, busy busy weekend, Sam. Yeah, he'll be in good form after his midweek treat in Reddy's Island, went and did the business. Didn't look like it was going to do the business, but ended up doing it in good style earlier mm. this afternoon. Johnny Pearson, you say you're off to Newbury this weekend. Hopefully so, anyway. Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully off to Newbury and not not too busy before before heading really into sort of Christmas season. Um, but yeah, what about yourself, Sam? Also, is this a new thing where you uh, tip a Niall Houlihan horse as your nap every week? No, no, don't. Like <laughs> the Goshen thing last week wasn't. That was a, a big risk, and I completely regret that. But uh, I mean, you gave a good case for Hansard, so that's what I do. Um, but I am. I'm actually at a Christmas party on Saturday as well, an old old work party. I'm at so. Looking forward to that. And next weekend, well, next week, we're going to have a brand new look to the postcast. So look forward to that. It's going to be a really nice new look to the show. um, And you'll get more details of that next week. Uh, As always, do like, comment, share and subscribe. Get those naps in down below. And we will see you again next weekend. Thanks for watching.